And welcome back. Diagnosing Alzheimer's disease can be a complex and time-consuming process requiring evaluations ranging from brain scans to cognitive and lab tests to reviews of medical history as well as symptoms. Albert Einstein College of Medicine recently was awarded a grant to detect behavioral markers for Alzheimer's present in the early, I should say present early in the course of the disease before it could actually be clinically diagnosed. Now joining us to share more details, we're pleased to have the assistant professor at Saul R. Corey Department of Neurology at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Dr. Jeanette Mahoney. And uh, Dr. Mahoney, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I guess we say congratulations for the grant, but talk to us, Lily, about what this grant is going to be able to do. Sure, great. Thank you guys so much for having me. So um, this grant is going to allow us to look at a novel, non-invasive, non-cognitive marker for um, Alzheimer's disease as we will test participants using a very simple reaction time test. Basically, we'll show them a light and we'll ask them quickly hit the button as soon as you see that. Do the same with some sort of vibration and they'll just be asked to respond as soon as possible. Sometimes these stimuli will come together and sometimes they'll come alone. But when they come together, we're able to see how much the brain benefits from receiving redundant uh, sensory information. And um, in our past work, over the past 15 years, we've realized that that specific magnitude of multisensory integration is linked to many important cognitive and motor outcomes, especially like gait problems, falls, um, and balance issues in our older adults. I got the doctor in the house, but I'm going to ask you to help me out because for some people who may not be so familiar with multisensory integration, such as myself, what exactly is multisensory integration? Sure. So if you picture yourself at a traffic light, right, you're waiting for the light to turn green. As soon as that light turns green, that's your cue, right? That's your visual cue to go. Um, the amount of time it takes for you to press the gas is the amount of time it takes you to respond to that light. What we're doing in the lab is we're emulating a similar uh, sensory um, stimulus where we present just stars. And as soon as they come up, we say respond as quickly as possible. We also send vibrations. Um, we, we tailor these studies to specifically set, um, visual and somatosensory stimuli because we feel and we know that they are very important to our motor outcomes, especially when it comes to walking um, and you know navigating through the world every day. So what happens in the brain is when it receives redundant information like sensory, uh, a, a vibration and um, a uh, light at the same time, like if you imagine your iPhone lighting up and ringing and vibrating all at the same time, you're bound to answer that phone call faster. But this isn't true for all older adults. In fact, the older adults that can't benefit from receiving this extra information are the ones that go on to have more gait problems and more falls. And those are the people that we're really worried about. And in our last study, what we showed is that people with cognitive decline, those with mild cognitive impairment and even dementia, we're not able to integrate at all. And so basically we've identified a network in the brain where people with cognitive impairments also have impairments in motor processing and also having problems with sensory processing. So what we're doing in this grant is trying to take an overall um, image of the brain, keeping in mind the intersection of sensory motor and cognitive processes, figuring out where exactly in the brain people who don't integrate have problems so that we can develop future tailored interventions to sort of get to these people before it's a real problem and hopefully slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease. That's our ultimate goal. Yeah. Talk to us about the borough of the Bronx for a minute. How do we fare when it comes to Alzheimer's? Um, how do you fare? I, I mean, it's prevalent. I don't know the exact numbers, right. but I can tell you from our, from our studies, about 10 to 20% of older adults show some signs of cognitive uh, impairment and preclinical or clinical signs of Alzheimer's. The thing about Alzheimer's is really sort of tricky to diagnose, and a lot of studies rely on post-mortem after we die to go back and see whether these tangles and plaques in the brain exist. In fact, one of our sister studies, the Einstein Aging Study, actually um, does these sorts of autopsy tests to go back and confirm diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. But my argument is that it's too late when it's when it's already Alzheimer's. We got to get into it. Uh, we got to figure out what's going on quicker so that we can delay onset. And with uh, this multi, you know, cultural and diverse population of the Bronx here, I think we have a great way of looking at it by different races and genders. And um, we're we're really fortunate in that regard. Yeah. So talk about the link to early Alzheimer's. It's very important uh, to get that. Um, but are we seeing early detection? How, uh, are we seeing more, I should say, in the area of early detection? 
So what we're doing here is um, a lot, uh, a, a bunch of new research has shown that we can actually test for uh, presence of Alzheimer's disease by looking at plasma. So you could literally draw a vial of blood and um, get the plasma and send it to the lab and determine their levels of one specific protein, which is A beta, although there are other ones out there um, that are being considered. But for this current threat, the idea is can we use the multisensory integration and correlate that with presence of A beta so that we can determine whether or not multisensory integration by itself is a marker, an early marker of um, Alzheimer's disease. So where do we go from here now that you've got the grant? Talk to us about what, how long this will take and, and, and how long this process will flesh out to. Sure, absolutely. So we have a five-year grant. We are working on uh, recruitment as we speak. The idea with the grant is that we're going to create, uh, we're going to recruit 208 participants, half that are uh, cognitively normal, meaning that they do well on our neuropsych uh, battery, as well as do not have presence of A beta in the blood, and the other half will have uh, presence of A beta in the blood, suggesting a preclinical AD diagnosis, um, and will probably not do as well on the neuropsych performance. What'll happen is they'll come in for a battery of like three different days where they receive this comprehensive neuropsych testing, sensory testing, motor tens uh, testing, um, as well as receive an MRI and get the blood draws. After we get the blood results back, we'll know whether they fall into the um, cognitively normal or the preclinical AD group. And those that have preclinical AD as diagnosed by their um, presence of A beta in the blood, will go on to have a PET scan. And the thing about a PET scan is it not only tells us what uh, how much uh, A-beta is present in the, in the brain, but it also tells us where, which is very important because we're trying to isolate the brain regions that are sort of affected by this process. So we'll study them every year for the next three years longitudinally, and we hope to get other studies to uh, both increase the number of people in the study as well as increase the duration that we can study them over time. Because when you're studying mobility uh, impairments like falls, they don't just happen the next day. It takes some time. So if we have uh, we have a process in order where we'll call them every two months, track whether or not they've had a fall, and then we'll be able later to go back in time and see did the people who didn't integrate really uh, have more falls or have a, a shorter duration between the time they came here and the time they fell. So we'll get a wealth of information, um, and we're really excited to start. But uh, we're, we're we're planning for uh, a late summer start. Uh, Dr. Jeanette Mahoney, thank you so much for being with us. Of course, as you said, over the course of the next five years, this study will be taking place. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get you back and uh, give us a little update as to maybe what you're finding, or and definitely after the results come back, let us know so that way we can be a little bit more aware right here in the borough of the Bronx. Absolutely. My pleasure. I would love to. All thank right. you so much for having me. Thank you, Dr. Jeanette Mahoney. Now, I want to let you know for more information, you can visit the website at EinsteinMed.edu or follow them on Twitter and Instagram at Einstein Med. We encourage you don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more open. We're going to come back right after this.